Yeah, quite, quite a few people over this last uh, six months have asked about my partnership with Glidewell. Um, since previously, I've had relationships with different implant companies in my career. Um, many people don't know that the Institute was the first off-site program before you could buy Nobel Bar Pharma product. And P.I. Brandemark and I used to sign the certificate so that dentists, general dentists, could buy Nobel Pharma product. And so through the years, um, with FDA studies and things like that, I've been involved with many different companies and have got to see the world on both the outside and the inside aspect of it with a general practitioner. And one of the things that really is necessary in order to have a high quality service to patients is a great dental laboratory. And as a consequence, I've worked with several with all, I've trained over 10,000 dentists at this point, and one of that, that training aspect is to deliver the highest service to help set and elevate the standard of care. And it takes a laboratory that is specifically trained in implant dentistry to do that, relative to emergence contours and contacts, and there's so many things that are different in, in implant prosthetics than traditional dentistry. An implant is not a tooth, and the reason why we have higher complication rates than natural tooth rates is because we keep attempting to treat it like a tooth and it's not a tooth. It's a rigid structure biomechanically different. And, and so I came out here to see how you made the process and had an opportunity to, to meet the owner, Jim Glidewell, and makes sense his last name is similar to <laughs> the company now that I understand that. And Actually, we hit it off, I thought, personally well. We went to dinner and, and we spent quite a few hours discussing philosophies. And his philosophy is so closely aligned to mine and my faculty that we're here to serve the profession. We're here to share what we have with the profession and we're here to elevate it. In fact, my mission statement of the Institute is to help elevate and set the standard of care in implant dentistry. And I never met really anybody on the other side of the table other than another dentist that had such a high dedication to elevating and making a new standard. And I found that in him and completely unique. And in order to do that, he had to start right from the bottom and he started redoing like everything until it was a higher standard and then took it from there and made it a higher standard. Now I understand why his temporaries are so perfect <laughs> because he starts at the bottom and he puts all the pieces together and he likes to have a little control to be able to have that. And you have to have control if you're gonna have the highest standard. And his personality and his desire and his work brought me out to the lab, and then I couldn't even sleep for the next month. I mean, the, the commitment to quality and all this digital stuff that, so that the quality is equalized all the way across all the parts and printing crowns instead of, I mean, all the technology that you brought to it is, I've got like 17 patents in my head that I could interface our technologies. <laughs> Just, it's, it's like another world opening up. Um, Dentistry will never be the same. You guys have helped elevate the field so, and then I see you do more than a thousand cases a day. How, how is this possible to do such high quality work a thousand cases a day? If a, if a dentist could do that, they, they could retire after one week. <laughs> you know? Jack and I go back a long time. You know, the first course I took in implant dentistry that was not a root form was given by Jack Hahn, maxillary subperiosteal implants. That must have been 50 years ago. And I respected him there because he was a little ahead of, my, of me on the learning curve. And uh, we've kept, and I made him part of my institute. When I set up the first hands-on program in dentistry, I selected a faculty of internationally known people. Um, and Jack Hahn, I asked to help with this hands-on surgery thing. And, he had incredible hands, very gifted, uh, intuitive individual. Um, and as a consequence, my early years of the Institute, back in 40 years ago, Jack was part of it. So and we, we've 
shared a same commitment, trying to share with what we not know, not trying to show off. Nobody's out there. It's not a gunfight to see who's the last one standing in the OK Corral, but it's our lectures are, let me sh make your job easier, let you show you what's working for us, let's uh, decrease your complications, and he's got that style too. And so it, it's perfect timing to get back again. So um, he's got a very unique approach that my, as far as a teaching institute, his implant design was made from a surgical perspective. My implant designs have been made from a loading perspective and long term. Well, the first 25 implants you put in, my implant design was terrible. It wasn't designed to make it easier to put in. The fact that he makes it tapered, major advantage for the first 150 implants you put in. Your drills go in easier, you, the, the implant sinks in a third to a half of the way before it's touching the bone, so it, it, so it, it makes it easier, a little bit more predictable as far as the final site. And so the intuitive uh, aspects that he then worked with you and then modified a few times, you've come up with a super product for the first 200 implants somebody places. Any of the designs that I made, don't use them. <laughs> this is a much easier product, to get, and especially if you're taking out a tooth and putting it in the same time, don't even try using the previous product. This is so much farther ahead than anybody else. You're going to go to this product. And I haven't had one person that switched over that didn't say, I'm glad I switched, switched over. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to be a part of it. I thank you for letting me contribute again to the field. And, um, and especially, I thank Jim Glidewell. His commitment to excellence and what he's able to do with digital laboratory techniques is going to make it even more predictable across the board. And you watch over this next year. It'll be at another level. His commitment, I know, is we'll be doing something that's a little bit more ahead of the field during the next year. He's got that attitude. Yeah.